Welcome back folks for the second part of the of this video looking at vacuum tube power supplies. So in this video what we're going to do is look at some practical considerations. We, the last <coughs> video we saw, we saw a few circuit diagrams of some of the basic principles and uh, in this video we're going to be looking at uh, basically how to build one of these uh, supplies either for a ham radio transmitter or an audio amp, something like that. Anyway, let's crack on. Right, so <clears throat> if I was going to build a power supply, uh, I would basically have most of these components here and we'll just show you, you know, what's what. So to start off with, you want a chassis. Now, I usually go for these Hammond aluminium chassis or you could use a steel chassis depending on how big your power supply is. And what you want to try and do is mount the transformer. This is a this transformer is way too big for this chassis, but it shows the point. You want to try and mount it so that all the just get into the center of the picture a bit. You want to mount it so that the terminals are on the inside of the chassis because you really want to avoid um exposed terminals or anything that can give you an electric shock. So that's the reason why we do that. In terms of mounting things, so for the diodes and if you're mounting, if, if, you're, if the power supply you're building is relatively small um, and not going overboard, you can mount the diodes and the capacitors on a uh, perforated board like this. Now this is the, um, I don't know if you can see that, uh, but this is the slightly larger perforated Vero board so I can't remember what the exact pitch of this is, but if you go on RS or Rapid or DigiKey or any of those other places, you should be able to find this. And it's the biggest pitch that's available. And this is usually adequate for power supplies up to, well, I've even, I've used this in, even up to a thousand volts. So, um, you know, that's actually pretty okay. If you're going higher than a thousand volts, then it's probably pushing it a bit. You probably want to be mounting the diodes on separate um, tags and things like that so that everything's well insulated. Because what you have to realise is, is that you'll be surprised how e how easily things are. I mean, something like that. If you're anything over above 1,000 volts and you've got diodes which are sort of um, not, you know, just a few strips away, they will arc. Uh, you'll be surprised. Anyway, but... But that's usually adequate for sort of anything up to a thousand. In my experience, I've never had any problems with it. So in terms of diodes, well, got a nice little selection of diodes there. Now these are the bog standard 1N4007s, which again are rated at a PIV of a thousand volts at about an amp. And in general, anything up to about 700, 800 volts, these are usually adequate. If you're going a bit higher, um, you can string diodes in series, but I wouldn't probably use these. I would probably use the chunkier version, which is the one in. Let's get it into focus again. It's a bit too small, I think. That's it. Not sure if it's really focusing on there. Anyway, that's the one in five six zero eight. Now these things. Uh, a bit more chunkier and again if you're using them if you're using if you're going up above a thousand volts then you can string a couple of these in series these are rated at a thousand volts at uh, probably a bit more just a bit over an amp possibly um, but uh, you want to sort of string two or three of them in series and that will give you uh, that will increase the safety margin a bit so in terms of capacitors well these are the these are the old school capacitors that they used to use back in the day. These are paper and oil, and uh, as you can see, this one, these are rated at, uh, two, these are 2 microfarad at, uh, what is it, 200 volts. So you can see how big they are. And luckily we don't need to use those unless you're um, desperately keen to, remain, to retain authenticity. So for the most part, for the smoothing capacitors, we generally use electrolytics like this. So this particular one is uh, 560 microfarad at 400 volts. So this is probably a bit too big um, to be used on its own. 
but this would certainly work if you wanted to make a really high voltage power supply where you wanted to string a load of these in series to increase the working voltage you know that would work quite well in general I generally use for sort of you know some medium voltage power supplies I generally use these uh, 22 microfarad and this one's rated at 450 volts so you could use a pair of those that'll give you 10 microfarad at uh, at uh, 900 so yeah and the size difference is quite amazing when you look at it compared to one of those old school uh, capacitors just another thing about the um, the diodes before I go on to the uh, chokes uh, this is a um, this is actually a diode believe it or not this is a very high voltage diode which if you were again if you're building a really high voltage power supply sort of 2 to 3 kV uh, this is probably what you want. You don't really want. I know people do use um, the uh, the five six oh eights in series, and I have used those before for anything up to three kV, and it d it does work. But you could have a lot of them. But these are these are quite nifty actually. They're sort of extra high voltage. I think they are rated at uh, something like ten kV or something ridiculous. Uh, in terms of chokes. Um, Chokes are difficult to find actually. So if you want, the, as I mentioned earlier on, if you want a small choke, say 10, 8, 8 to 10 um, Henry's at about sort of 100 milliamps, they, they're quite um, quite easy to obtain. But if you if you want to start putting chokes in sort of high voltage power supplies or sort of anything from um, <clears throat> sort of around about 1,000 volts, um, you know, to supply say a linear amplifier, uh, the, getting the getting a suitable choke uh, which which can carry the current and uh, also the voltage and becomes very difficult and for the most part uh, we generally as I, as I mentioned anything above a thousand volts we don't bother with a choke just uh, use um, a load of smoothing capacitors and and by and large that's uh, that that's usually adequate but again if you have a choke you can you can you can mount it on this um, on this chassis. And obviously, don't forget all important fuse. And I usually use something like either one to three amp in, in one of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a power supply that I made uh, a couple of years ago, which does show sort of the basic uh, principles of uh, of construction for building a valve a valve uh, power supply. So this is a power supply I built <clears throat> a few years ago for a transmitter that I made. And it kind of like shows uh, some of the sort of safety principles that I've tried to adopt uh, for building uh, valve power supplies, high voltage power supplies. So as you can see, we've got it on a uh, steel chassis. And these transformers, when I built them, they weren't sort of suitable for mounting sort of upside down on the chassis so the terminals were on the underside. So I had to mount them sort of this way up and try and sort of prevent you know uh, electric shocks and all that type of thing what I've done here is obviously the the, the output uh, secondaries are obviously on this uh, side here with all these terminals so I've put a perspex sheet here to try and provide some protection and likewise with this um, other transformer which I think is a 250 volt transformer and it also provides some uh, Six, also provides 6.4 volts for the uh, heaters. Again, I've tried to sort of put these rubber silicone um, sleeves on everything just to uh, improve the safety. Uh, we've got a choke there, 20 Henrys. So that that's gives, gives a good example of what a choke looks like. And then these tubes here are actually uh, voltage regulating tubes, uh, VR150, uh, VR105 and a VR150. So but we'll have to talk about those in another day. So one thing you have to do once you before you start testing or putting your hands near any of this lot is you always got to make sure you know and aware of what the mains is doing because you need to before you start poking around with these you always got to double check and double check again that the thing is off. And that's one of the habits I've got into. I mean I'm still alive. I've been messing with this stuff since I was about 16. 
And my sort of routine for sort of fiddling with valve stuff and high voltages is that before I even go anywhere near them, uh, I, I switch the mains on and switch it off again and I double check again. And by doing that, it's uh, a good way of staying safe. And the other thing I do as well is once once the thing is on, I really sort of <laughs> just stay, stay well away from it, treat it like it's a time bomb, uh, and then you'll um, then you'll be fine. But yeah, you have to be uh, you have to be aware of the vol high voltages because they can they can kill. They have killed people before, so you know as long as you as long as you know what's going on, you you'll be fine. So this is the underside of this power supply, and I'm just going to point out a few uh, things uh, of note. So down here we've got this. Uh, this is the main board for the um, 700 volts. You can see those capacitors I was mentioning uh, in series, and I've got that. And you can see the perforated board there with um, the diodes. So that's that's what I've used, and it works pretty pretty good. Uh, I have got um, <clears throat> some tag strip there for some more diodes. And again, if it was really high voltage, um, those would be used quite often if I can get hold of them. They're quite rare, those ceramic pillars, uh, but they're pretty good. Um, the rest of it is not pretty much standard, really. You've got a few bleeding resistors there and um, dropping resistors. <clears throat> and the other thing as well, which is important, are these relays, because when you're switching on your... Uh, various voltages because this is obviously a multi voltage supply it does it, it, it it's not just high voltage it does 700 250 i think 300 as well uh, <clears throat> you don't really want to be switching 700 volts on a uh, on a conventional switch like this uh, you, they're not really rated for that sort of voltage so you have to use these chunky relays uh, which makes it a little bit more complicated because you have to have an lt supply the other thing I, I generally do with my power supplies, I generally use this silicon wire. I don't usually, I, I never, I, I generally avoid PVC uh, for just about everything to do with electronics. I hate PVC. I generally use PTFE coated wire. I use uh, silicon, silicon wire for sort of valve stuff because it's, it's, it's quite high voltage and um, it looks good and it's easy to handle. Uh, what else? That's more or less about it, really. You can see a fuse there, the mains, etc., etc. So that's um, that's more or less it. Uh, so what I'm going to do quickly before we go is just a, a quick demo of just how to sort of safely measure stuff in um, you know in high voltage supplies or or valve equipment in general. You know if you're testing stuff and you you know you you want to do it relatively safely. So if we're going to do any measurements on a high voltage supply, <clears throat> a few things to do just to check before you start putting your leads on. First of all, obviously make sure the thing is off and double check and double check again. The other thing is to, um, <clears throat> when you're measuring, is try to avoid sort of just using the, the leads directly. So basically you, when the, when the uh, piece of equipment is off and you want to measure something which is relatively high voltage, put the... Uh, the leads on with croc clips and uh, these um this particular multimeter has uh croc clips which go on the end of the leads but uh, if you haven't got that just use conventional uh, croc clips and um you know just keep your hands out of the uh, out of the uh, equipment the other thing to bear in mind is if you're going to be measuring high voltages make sure you've got a half decent multimeter and it needs to be um be able to measure up to a thousand volts which you can see there a lot of these Chinese multimeters you get, you know, they're not really rated sufficiently. So if you put your um, relatively high voltage across them, they'll probably blow up. In which case, you'll have to buy a decent one. But um, this is a fluke, and uh, I've used this; it works pretty well. The other thing you can use, actually, is, which is a really good investment if you're thinking of doing lots of work with valves, is an AVO meter, <clears throat> because those are rated at; those can actually measure really high voltages, and um, Although they're old school, they do work very well. Uh, but this one works pretty good, and that's, that's what we'll use to, to measure. So as you can see, I'm, I've sort of defined where I want to measure, and I've basically kept my fingers out. So what we'll do is we'll uh, switch it on, and uh, do our and hopefully get uh, our measurement. So what we'll do, we know that the uh, 
everything is live so we will just turn it on as you can see I've got uh, a thousand volts there turn it off and what I do then immediately switch it off take the plug out and I'm gonna wait because as you can see my bleeding resistors are still discharging this is a very important point this is because even if you would start delving in like a mad horse or a bull in a china shop you really need to wait for a few minutes to let all those capacitors discharge otherwise you might get a nasty jolt and I have had that in the past so something to be aware of one of the things people do recommend is before you start fiddling in high voltage stuff is to get like a screwdriver and uh, you connect the screwdriver with like a crop clip to ground and then you sort of go around touching everything like that discharging any potential uh, uh, high voltage areas so that you don't get a bolt and if you can remember that and you know the main thing is just to keep checking keep checking the mains make sure everything's off um, tr whenever it's on just don't go near the thing uh, you'll live to fight another day anyway I think that more or less sort of concludes the basics on valve power supplies so what next we're going to do is make a little project um, an oscillator and we'll show you some of the basics of how to build something up that actually works Anyway, thanks for watching.